Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, because I was sick that one week, the timing is, is off, and I need to get you this feedback so you can finish part three. Uh, and of course, we're doing the activity in class Wednesday, so I can't lecture. So uh, I'd like you to uh, watch the uh, other uh, video lecture uh, that goes over uh, the, uh, you know, going from part two to part three. Uh, but before that, there's a couple specific issues for this class that I wanted to mention. So first off, I'd imagine uh, you want to know how I followed it. Well, basically I followed it uh, based on how well you followed instructions. Uh, and uh, on job applications and even for me today for grant applications, uh, that's what they're doing. They're looking to see how closely you follow instructions and uh, they toss out people that don't follow instructions because frankly do you want to hire somebody who doesn't pay attention to you no you don't uh, so that's how i graded it uh, either zero or 100 percent for each rubric so check your rubric scores uh, if i gave you a zero that means your answer was missing or i don't agree with what you said and if i didn't agree with what you said i will usually give you feedback uh, and 100, of course, means you answered correctly. And I'm not kidding about that. Here's a, a, one of my favorite examples. This one congressman in hiring uh, staffers at the entry level, uh, their requirements were very simple. They wanted a cover le uh, letter, they wanted a resume, and they wanted your favorite recipe for fried catfish. And the reason why the Congresswoman put that in there is that she wanted to screen out people who didn't follow instructions. And so if people just thought that was weird or they didn't like catfish, they left it off, they didn't get their applications considered. So please keep that in mind. Uh, one problem that a lot of students, I'd have to say almost everybody had, was keywords. Uh, that you weren't really getting the idea of keywords. So uh, go back and review that part of the assignment. But uh, here's what keywords are for. Let's say that I'm, I'm looking for someone to hire and I have 2,000 resumes sitting on the server. And I'm not gonna go through the, the server and look at every 2,000, at 2000 resumes. So let's say I'm looking for someone who can program in SPSS or SAS. So I search for the resumes on the server for SPSS and SAS and I only read those. So keywords basically means what identifiable name or keyword can you put in your resume and since it's going to be searched it could be pretty much anywhere by a computer. So uh, are you making sure that you're getting those important key terms? Saying that you're honest or reliable that's not what we mean by a key term. And then another problem that popped up in uh, this assignment uh, your email addresses. This is my hall of shame of email addresses that uh, students have used. Uh, Dainty Babe, uh, Sexy Baby, Blazing Cutie, uh, Deranged. Imagine uh, trying to get a job at a bank, Deranged. Yes, just email me back there at my email address, deranged at gmail.com. Uh, so hot bod dreams, and some are even more embarrassing. So please, folks, remember, uh, you know, it costs nothing to create a Gmail account that's just your name, and why don't you do it? Uh, so that's all I have to say about the assignment. Uh, look at the uh, video, the other video, and uh, take notes from it, and then you'll be in good shape for Resume Part 3, where I'd like to see your brand new functional resume.